Welcome to Ukenic. In this video, we're going to talk about insulation resistance, what that means, and what problems that can cause. So, hybrid vehicles and electric ones as well, you have two circuits and they should be completely separate. You got the 12 volt circuit that operates the electronics and also operates any circuit boards and things like that. Uh, some of them might uh, work at 5 volts, but they're still part of that 12 volt uh, circuit. And then you have the high voltage system indicated by these orange cables. Now, sometimes you might have a car that does not start. And uh, we had a case uh, when we had actually a technician that called us and said they didn't even have any codes at all and the car will not start at all. So after diving into that vehicle and taking a look at it, we found that the insulation resistance was too low. So what, uh, what does that even mean? So basically the two circuits, the low voltage and the high voltage need to be completely separate. So basically there should not be any current going from one circuit to another. There will most likely be the high voltage sending power current to the low voltage if there is low resistance. So that meaning like if this connector here somehow got shorted to the ground of the vehicle, then we have no resistance. So power from the high voltage system can end up going to the chassis of the car. And that can for one be dangerous because that can uh, cause shocks or death. But second can also damage the electronics on the car. So we want to keep the two uh, circuits completely separate, high voltage separate. So when you first turn on the ignition, the vehicle does a quick check and says, hey, do I see a really high resistance? Meaning like power is not going to flow from the high voltage to the low voltage system. We, got, we want to see high resistance. So typically that's going to be one mega ohm. So you want to see one mega ohm between all these components of the hybrid system, the high voltage system, and and the 12 volt. Um, so what we wanna do, the first thing you wanna do is you wanna take your scanner here, we're using the Ucanic scanner, and then we wanna go to body, and it's good to scan all the components of the hybrid system, but the first one you probably wanna look at is the BMS or the battery management system, which is the hybrid battery and the circuit board that's inside it. You wanna look at live data, and then you can go general actual values. And right here, we can see all the values. We can see the charge level of hybrid battery. You can see everything here from the hybrid battery status of contactors are closed right now. But here, isolation resistance is, it needs to be over 1000 kilo ohms or one mega ohm. We're at 5000, so that's good. We gotta be above that. If the value here, the actual value is lower than this value that's here, than the 1000, what the car will say is, um, is going to say that, hey, uh, there's not enough resistance separation of the two circuits. But we, we can't turn on the hybrid system. So what we'll basically do is gonna keep the contactors here. You can see stuff, so the contactor is closed. You're gonna keep them open. The contactors uh, yeah, are right here. So that's basically like a main relay that um, it's it's the same principle as relay, but it's designed to uh, handle much higher currents, and that disconnects the hybrid battery every time you turn off the ignition, uh, so uh, so that the hybrid battery is separated. If there's an issue, whatever, with the car, you're not going to get shocked when you turn on the ignition. Or the check is done. It's like it, the hybrid, the BMS right here. There's a bunch of checks, but one of them is the insulation resistance. So if it's too low. It's gonna say, don't connect these con connectors, this um, switch here, the contactors. Uh, don't power on the hybrid system. So the problem now um, can be a little tricky because to diagnose and find out where there's a way to do tests. And you know, this test is pretty simple. Um, first, you can start with, um, with the cables. You have the power electronic module over here. You have the DCD. DC, DC converter over here, we have the hybrid battery itself, we have the AC compressor, all these components can go bad and they can have, if they have a low resistance, because they're all part of the circuit, if there's a low resistance between basically, let's say, the terminals for the high voltage and also um, the ground, if there's a low resistance between those, that can prevent the battery from connecting. So basically the bottom line is that the issue could be anywhere. It can be in the battery itself. It can be in any of those components. It can be on the cables itself. So I'm gonna test a couple of them to show you how. Um, the first one we're gonna test, let's test the hybrid battery. Uh, you wanna, 
insulation tester and you're gonna be at least double the voltage. So here we're gonna be at 500 voltage. We're gonna turn that on and we're gonna connect to this, the, the frame of the battery. So this is gonna be ground, right? Um, but, and then here we have the terminals that come out. Uh, terminals that come out though, the thing is that you only test them between here to there, all right? Because you're not actually testing the battery cells itself because the contactors are always, like if you unplug, you disconnect these contactors are gonna be um, open. So there's no continuation between here and the battery circuit. So you're not really testing the battery. So we'll test the battery too, but first let's check this. So you basically, you, you connect these two leads here and there, and then we'll send a little bit of current and wanna be at least one mega ohm or higher, okay? So that's how you test it. But again, it's unlikely the issue will be there. But we can test the battery cells as well. Now you have to be extremely careful here because you, this is batteries, I got high voltage and you can, um, you can injure you. But the first thing is you never wanna uh, connect to the two terminals themselves. We're actually not testing the circuit of the battery. This is 126 volts right there. So we're not testing the insulation between those two. There shouldn't be any insulation between these two. Insulation should be about a terminal and the ground, okay? So that's where uh, insulation should be. So if you test like that, you know, um, then you should get at least, you know, over one mega ohm. All right, so you can test the cables themselves. You connect to one cable and then um, here you can connect to that piece in this case or, or the metal piece. Just uh, between basically you connect them to the high voltage and you're also connecting to the low voltage, sending in this case 500 volts in that and there should not, there should be a really high resistance so that voltage should not go through and complete the circuit and come back to here and show zero. If it shows zero here, we have a problem. So let's check one. We know we do have an issue. And this is the uh, DC DC converter. This is what converts the 12 volt to high 120 or high voltage. So this is just, um, uh, this does the initial uh, charging of that battery if the battery is too low or, you know, so for reasons like that, we do have this um, DC DC converter. But for the most part, the battery is getting charged from the electric motor that's in the vehicle. But this is, um, we can test this as well. And so we're connecting to one of the terminals there and then the other one is right here. And we should see really over one. In this vehicle, it's required to have one mega ohm. Okay. And now we're testing this. We're gonna hold this for a couple of seconds. And you see it goes to zero meaning there's no resistance between this high voltage terminal here and, and the ground. This sh that should have basically um, really high resistance because this is part of the high voltage system. So the power is going through there and it's going through the rest of the high voltage components and it uh, should be separated from the ground of, of the DC, DC converter. We, oh, after we remove this part here, you can see that we have a blown piece right there that's uh, what's causing the issue but but you can see like in this case this is faulty but you it, it'll be a little tricky to find the insulation resistance you just have to check the different components you can unplug them as well like but it's a little bit more risky and dangerous um, but uh, if you let's say you unplug this then um, you're gonna you're gonna get other codes uh, basically as well in the hybrid system, but what you can do is you can go and look at the value of the insulation resistance on the scanner, and that should jump jump high if this was what was causing that short to the ground, the high voltage to the ground. So if, if we eliminate this and we remove this from the circuit, we're gonna get a bunch of other codes, but we can also uh, verify that, hey, that is correct, and this piece is causing the resistance to be very low and it's basically shorting the high voltage to the 12 volt, which is basically the principle of that. But uh, that's how you um, troubleshoot the uh, insulation issue on a hybrid vehicles. Now this is a 2010 Mercedes S400 parts, but the principle is the same. We do have an article that goes more in depth 
common codes. Different manufacturers will trigger a different fault code when you read the codes here. If you went to um, the BMS uh, system, when you read the codes, you're gonna get different fault codes depending on the manufacturer of the vehicle, but the, the, um, the issue, the concept is basically the same. All manufacturers do this check on their hybrid and electrical vehicles just to prevent people from getting shocked um, injured and also to prevent the electric electrical circuit of the vehicle thank you for watching mechanic where you can be the mechanic